welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air date is August 19th, 1956, and the title is Annie Oakley. Gunsmoke. Brought to you by l and the modern cigarette that lets you get full, exciting flavor through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Looks like the Kinsmans is at it again, Mr. Dillon. What? Jeff Kinsman and his wife standing by their wagon over yonder. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's after him about something, isn't she? I declare if I was Jeff, I'd leave her at the ranch when I come to town. Well, she's bigger than he is, Justin. <laughs> by golly, she just about is. Maybe you lost your pride, Jeff Kinsman, but I sure ain't. What kind of a man are you anyway? But are you sure he done it, Kate? Of course he done it. He does it every chance he gets. You gonna let another man flirt with your wife right in public? I just wanted to be sure. There he comes now. Ask him about it. I sure and that's Ed Dolliver she's talking about, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I guess they're not such good neighbors after all. Look, he's carrying a rifle. Yeah. It's a Sharps 50. It looks brand new. Eight well, dollars. I guess there won't be no trouble. Jeff Kinsman Hello, ain't Jeff. armed. Mrs. Kinsman, I want to settle something with you, Dolliver. What's wrong, Jeff? You're to leave my wife alone, you hear? What? You stop trying to fool with her. But Jeff, you gone crazy? You tell her, Mrs. Kinsman. She done told me. And I'm warning you, Dolliver, you go get your own woman, leave mine be. I don't know I like being accused this way. Put that gun down, I'll learn you to like it. They gonna fight, Mr. Dillon? And as long as they aren't gonna shoot each other. There. Now, what are you going to do, Kinsman? I'll show you. Oh, oh you got a knife. You put that knife away. I ain't armed. All right, hold it, Kinsman. This is my fight, Marshal. Not with a knife. Now, drop it. Go on, drop it. No. No, I won't drop it. But I won't use it on him. Not till next time, I won't. Come on and fight, you coward. You're bigger than I am. I'll fight you any way you like. I see you bought a new Sharps rifle, Dollar. Never mind guns. You men settle this some other way. Sure. Only he better remember I got a Sharps rifle at home. Now look, Kinsman, and you too, Dollar. If there's any shooting out your way, I'll know who to come for. And it won't take any time at all. Uh, That little coward ain't gonna do nothing. And I wouldn't put salt on an old crow like her anyway. (laughs) Jeff, you hear what he called me? He called me a coward. He called you? By heaven, Jeff, what things are coming to when a woman's got to put Chester, up with that? Chester, come on, let's go. I never heard of a man getting by insulting a lady right in public twice, and each time worse than the other. He's no good, that Dolliver, and you ain't much better. Oh, now, I swear up. she's going to have them men fighting yet, Mr. Dillon. That trouble ain't about over. Uh, that's the worst kind of trouble, Chester. You never know who's guilty of what.
with L&M can you enjoy the full, exciting flavor of today's finest tobaccos through the modern miracle of the L&M Miracle Tip. Through the pure white Miracle Tip, L&M tastes richer, smokes cleaner, draws easier. No other cigarette, plain or filter, gives you all the flavor you want. The rich, exciting flavor you get only from L&M. So light up, free up, let your taste come alive. Live modern. Smoke L and M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Get L and M today. a little more coffee, will you, Matt? Yeah, sure, Kitty. Thanks. Is that enough? <laughs> it's enough of this restaurant's coffee. <laughs> well, at least it's hot anyway. Yeah. Oh, uh, about Ed Dolliver. Mm-hmm. Well, all I know is that he's a bachelor, and I never yet, so I'm shy away from a pretty girl. Yeah. Kitty, I, huh? I want to ask you a question. Would you call Kate Kinsman pretty? She might have been. Once. That woman's lived a hard life, Matt. Oh? Uh-huh. In fact, it was Ed Dolliver who told me about her. Uh, she was married before, you know. No, no, I didn't know. Yeah, he died. Pneumonia or something. He was a buffalo hunter for the Santa Fe Railroad. He used to take Kate right along with him. Just like she was a man. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, maybe that's why she demands so much respect now. Matt, I don't think objecting to being called an old crow is exactly demanding respect for any woman. What's that? Oh, it's Chester. He looks pretty excited about something. Yeah. Excuse me, Kitty. Mm -hmm. I better go see what he wants. I'll see you later. Sure, Matt. Yeah, what is it, Chester? Miss Kinsman, she's waiting right over there. What? Well, is there something wrong? You better hear it from her, Mr. Doon. Yeah. You coming alone today? Yes, sir. Hello, Miss Kinsman. What can I do for you? It ain't me, Marshal. It's my husband. It's Jeff. Uh, what's the matter? He's dead. What? He was murdered early this morning. Ed Dolliver done it. Well, how do you know it was Dolliver? I'll show you how. I left Jeff right on the prairie where I found him. Uh, Chester. Y- yes, sir? Go get Doc. We'll follow Miss Kinsman out to the ranch. <laughs> There he is, Marshal. I ain't touched him, just throwed that canvas over him. Uh-huh. Hey, Miss Kinsman, how'd you happen to find him out here? I heard the shot. I knew Jeff didn't have his rifle with him. And yeah, whoever did it can't be accused of ambushing him. There's no cover anywhere around here. You're forgetting Ed Dolliver has a new Sharps 50, ain't you, Doc? Oh, yeah, well, um, it won't shoot over the horizon, will it? I'll take a look here, man. Marshal, you take a good look around the way I did, you'll see something. No? What? That little clump of switchgrass out there. A man could hide behind that. Clear out there? Why, that's more than a thousand yards. It ain't too far for a sharp. Uh, Chester, right over there and take a look, will you? Okay, what you doing? Matt? Yeah. Yeah, what is it? 
There's only one bullet in him. And it's not very far in. Now, what do you mean? I hope it was enough to kill him, all right, but uh, it was pretty well spent. Whoever fired it was a long ways off. I told you. What was Jeff doing here, anyways? He was putting out bait for wolves, Doc. Poisoning them. We've been bothered lately. Where do you want to bury him, Mrs. Ginsman? Oh, out back of the house. There's a place he liked. Well, I guess we can conduct a service of some sort. Why don't you get Ed Dolliver? I hear he reads the book real good. You haven't seen him around, have you, Miss Ginsburg? I can tell you right where he is. Oh? Huh? It's noon, ain't it? He's sitting on his front porch like he does every day at noon. He always sits there for an hour, doing nothing. I see. I wonder what he's thinking. What? I mean about having gone out and killed a man because of me. Must be working on his mind pretty strong. Yeah. But you know something? It was one or the other of them. It, it come to that. And all because of me. Oh, no. You mustn't feel guilty, Miss Kinsman. It wasn't your fault. Oh, I am guilty, Doc. Just being a woman men fight over just makes me guilty. How'd you find anything, Chester? I found this. Laying on the ground right behind that clump of grass. Oh, what is it? A shell from Sharp's 50. <laughs> Does it, Marshal? Now, Dolliver, it doesn't. There's one thing might have worked for me. Oh, what's that? My new sharps rifle. Supposing it hadn't ever been fired. You could tell, couldn't you? Easy. Where is it? Ain't no use, Marshal. I was shooting it this morning, trying it out for the first time. You weren't with anybody, huh? No. No, I I got no alibi, none at all. You don't even seem much interested in trying to clear yourself of this, Dollar. Well, I figure sometimes if a man raises too big a holler about how innocent he is, kind of works to make people think he's guilty. Yeah, sometimes, maybe. Uh, can you think of anybody else who might have shot Jeff? No. I'm the only one, I guess. Yeah. Oliver, I want you to tell me the truth now. Do you have any interest in Miss Kinsman? I wouldn't be proud of it. I could do better than her, Marshal. A whole lot better. Yeah. Yeah, you got a pencil and some paper around here. What? I want to write a note to Miss Kinsman. About what? Well, never mind. Just get it for me, will you? Whatever you say, Marshal. Uh, Chester. Yes, sir. Now, when I get this uh, written, I want you to ride over to Miss Kinsman's with it. Sure. But where are you going? Well, I'm taking Dolliver into Dodge to lock him up. But don't you tell her. Now, you stay here tonight, and I'll be back by tomorrow morning. I swear I don't understand. Uh, you will. Later. <laughs> Yes, live modern. Smoke modern. Smoke L&M. Enjoy a modern cigarette. L&M gives you the full, exciting flavor of today's finest tobaccos. No other cigarette, plain or filter, gives you the flavor you get through the modern miracle of the L&M Miracle Tip. Through the pure white Miracle Tip, L&M tastes richer, smokes cleaner, draws easier. So light up, free up, 
Let your taste come alive. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Get L&M today. I told you to stay away from that window, Chester. Well, I was only peeking to see if that there Mr. Dolliver was doing all right out there on the porch. Oh, well, was he? Oh, yes, sir. He's sitting real quiet, just staring off across the prairie. Yeah, that's good. Most noon, Mr. Dillon. You getting hungry? Well, I didn't have no breakfast to speak of hardly, and now that you mention it, I don't guess I'd mind setting down to a plate of hot meat and maybe a loaf of sourdough bread. See, maybe we could rummage around in his cupboard here some, hmm? Now, we'll eat when we get through here. Yeah, sure, but when'll that be? Yeah, not too long, if my hunch is right. And if it ain't? Yeah, you've been hungry before, haven't you? Mm. Yeah, come on over here. I just can't hardly see nothing out of this little hole. Yeah, there's a bigger one on your left there. Oh. oh. Yeah, I can see fine now. I got an idea there isn't going to be much to see anyway. You can't never tell. You uh, sure our horses are out of sight, huh? I got them tied up back of the house I told you, yeah. Mr. Jones. Okay. Hey, look at Mr. Dolliver. Got him. Knocked him right off of his chair. Yeah. Yeah. You see that puff of smoke out there? Mm. Yeah, that's a good thousand yards. Oh, that's some shooting, but whoever it is is pretty well hid. Yeah. Now, we'll wait a minute, then we'll go out back and get our horses. We're going to have to ride awful fast. We'll make it. Well, what about Mr. Dolliver? Leave him. He was hit square. Come on. <laughs> Put our horses in the barn here, Chester. Nobody in sight yet. Now, let's hurry. Uh, tie them up in those first two stalls, huh? All right, sir. Black on the inside of a cow in here after that blazing sunshine. Your eyes will get used to it after a while. I don't see nobody coming. Now she'll be along directly. I wasn't too sure we'd beat her. Mr. Dillon, what exactly did you tell her in that note you wrote? Yeah, just that Ed Dolliver had a good alibi. Well, who'd you say it was? A woman. A woman? Yeah, I didn't give a name. I just said that Dolliver was going to bring the woman into Dodge tonight and prove it. Well, I'll be darned. Uh, you keep an eye out here, Chester. I'm going to take a look around the barn. No, you gri- ain't, Marshal. Well, uh... Stand right where you are. It's her. She beat us back here. Get your hands up, both of you. I can't see a thing in here. No use, Miss Kinsman. You can't shoot both of us. I said get your hands up. Well, I'd be... That Sharps isn't a repeating rifle, you know. Then I'll shoot you, Marshal. And Chester will take you if you do. I heard what you told him. Them lies you wrote. I had to trick you out somehow. You can't prove I did nothing. Oh, you proved it. That had Dolliver's a while ago. That's pretty good shooting at a thousand yards, Miss Kinsman. Ha! Too good for a woman, Marshal. There ain't nobody'll believe you. I didn't believe it myself when we looked at Jeff yesterday. That was quite some shooting, too. Get out of here and leave me alone. I remembered something late, Miss Kinsman. What? How your first husband took you out buffalo hunting with him? Yeah, you can shoot all right. As good as any man. This rifle's aimed right at your chest, Marshal. 
You know, Miss Kinsman, I feel kind of sorry for you. Sorry? You liked men fighting over you. You needed for them, too. You needed it so bad you told Jeff lies about Ed Dolliver. That ain't so. Oh, yes, it is. You just had to have a man kill over you. But you knew Dolliver wasn't interested, so you shot Jeff yourself. That way, at least people would think they were fighting over you. No. Yeah, my note about Dolliver's alibi being a woman destroyed all that, didn't it? You just couldn't take that. Marshal. Here, give me your rifle. No. I'm glad I killed him. Yeah, but you didn't kill him. What? I sent Dolliver to Dodge for a day or so. What you shot was a couple of grain bags dressed in his clothes. No. Yeah, that's true. No. I hated Jeff, but I hated Dolliver even worse now. Like I say, Miss Kinsman, I'm sorry for you. Jeff was a good man. Now there's nobody to fight for you. In a moment, our star, William Conrad. What's your hobby? Some folks are bird watchers, some are stamp collectors, others like spectator sports. But here's a hobby that should fascinate just about everybody, and that's sky watching to help the Air Force spot unidentified planes. Just a few hours a week in your spare time is all that's necessary to follow this exciting and vital pursuit. All you have to do is volunteer for the Ground Observer Corps, a civilian component of the Air Defense Command. You'll be trained and supervised by officers and airmen of the United States Air Force to spot planes in your filter area. Men and women from teenage up can help cover the blind spots in our radar system by sky watching for two hours a week. That's all that's needed to keep up the 24-hour schedule of the Ground Observer Corps. Besides doing a necessary job for America, you'll be varying your daily routine with a different kind of hobby. Get your friends and neighbors together to join you as volunteers for the GOC. Find out from your local civilian defense office how you can be a ground observer for the USA. This has been a public service message by CBS Radio. And now, William Conrad. You know, on the frontier, it was usually land or water that were fought and died for. But next week, a man dies because of a clabbered building. And that was the West. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Jeanette Nolan, Harry Bartell, and Paul Duval. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in gun smoke.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.